San Antonio Spurs legend Manu Ginobili was finally inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, and here at Free Dawkins we break down the top moments that defined Manu's unforgettable career. Spurs general manager R.C. Buford first scouted Manu in 1997 in Australia at the 22 and under World Championships. He was like a wild colt out there, Buford told ESPN, just doing crazy shit. Some of it made sense, and some of it didn't. In June 1999, Manu checked all the mock drafts and none of them had me going anywhere, he recalled in 2013. So Manu, who was with Argentina's national team, preparing for a game in such a remote spot of the Brazilian Amazon that it was only accessible by airplane or boat, forgot all about it on draft night and went to sleep. Having won its first NBA title just a few days prior, San Antonio picked Manu at number 57. Someone woke me up in the middle of the night to tell me, Manu told the San Antonio Express News in 2013. I said, they're the defending NBA champions. Are you sure? I had no idea they were even looking at me. I was excited, for sure. Then again, at 57th, I knew the chances of playing were not that good. Born into a basketball family, Manu benefited from his Italian ancestry by using his citizenship rights to move there in 1998, first to Reggio Calabria and then Italian powerhouse Kinder Bologna. In two seasons with Kinder, Manu was named league MVP both years. He also led the team to an Italian championship and two Italian Cup titles, as well as the 2001 EuroLeague crown where he also collected MVP honors at the Final Four. Some of Manu's biggest moments transpired in the Argentina team uniforms. In this one, he lofted an off-balance shot just a fraction of a second before the final buzzer to give Argentina an 83-82 victory over Serbia on the opening day of the 2004 Summer Games in Athens. On the final play Ginobili levitated and leaned into one of his most memorable shots, rolling to the ground just as the basketball banked off the glass and into the hoop. It was almost impossible, Manu said at the time. Once it left my hand, I knew it was good. This is a very special thing. Less than two weeks after Manu's buzzer beater against Serbia, he led Argentina with 29 points to defeat the United States 89-81 in the Olympic semifinals, marking the first time since 1988 the Olympic men's basketball gold medal would not go to the US. One day later, Manu would lead Argentina to the gold. The Americans had put together a team featuring Manu's Spurs teammate Duncan as well as Allen Iverson, LeBron James and Stefan Marbury. In 1992, the USA had the best players ever, Manu said after the semifinal win. Here, they are great players, too, but they are young and never played internationally. So, with different rules, it's a whole different thing. The rest of the world is getting better, and the States isn't bringing their best players. In 2005 against the Suns, Manu shot past Quentin Richardson for a left-handed dunk on the first play, setting the tone for what might have been the Argentines' finest performance in a Spurs uniform. At the height of the Spurs' rivalry with Mike D'Antoni and Steve Nash's Phoenix Suns in 2005, Manu poured in a career-high 48 points to lead a comeback in which his squad rallied from a 17-point deficit in the fourth quarter to capture a 128-123 overtime victory. Joe Johnson defending him beautifully. And oh. Ginobili still puts it in. Oh, Ginobili! Manu Ginobili, a career-high 48. I've never had a game like this, Ginobili said. Manu played with two bruised quads and even left the game at one point, limping off the court after his left ankle was stepped on. He went 16 for 22 from the floor during the game and drained all but one of 12 free throw attempts, a showing that was needed with Tony Parker missing all but one of his nine shots and Bruce Bowen going 0 for 7. In 2005, San Antonio captured its third title in seven seasons, and its first without David Robinson. Although Manu struggled in games three and four in the series, he scored 23 points, including 11 in the fourth quarter, in the series clinching Game 7. Duncan ended up winning Finals MVP, but many believe Ginobili should have been co-MVP, if not taken the award outright. Manu averaged 18.7 points and four assists in that series, and the Spurs relied on him often in crunch time. In February 2008, Manu and King James had an epic meeting. LeBron scored 39 points, including 18 in the fourth quarter, but even the King would have to pay homage to the Argentine after this one. Manu scorched Cleveland by hitting a career-high eight three-pointers en route to scoring a season-high 46 points and a 112-105 win. The Spurs started the fourth quarter trailing by four, but Manu erased the deficit by going four for four from long range while scoring 18 points in the final frame. It was unbelievable, James said. There's nothing you can do when a guy gets hot like that. He shot step-back threes. He shot pull-up threes. It was a great performance by Manu. 
Eight days later, Manu had another legendary moment as he and the Spurs faced the Minnesota Timberwolves. Ginobili against Foy, the pull-up jumper, got it! <laughs> he nailed it with 6.2 to go, and the Timberwolves got a timeout. I was looking at Jordan and Brian Russell all over again. With darting penetration and one dribble behind his back, Ginobili rose over Randy Foy at the top of the key with 6.2 seconds remaining to place the exclamation point on a 199 road victory. Manu reeled off 44 points, including 19 in the second quarter during a sequence in which he hit six straight three-pointers over the final 6.33 of the period. Back to Ginobili, fires again, got it again! <laughs> Unbelievable! In typical Manu fashion, he described the winning 17-feet jumper as lucky. I got lucky there, he said, I took a good shot and it went in. In the 2008 Western Conference semifinals, Manu had another clutch moment. Duncan scored 40 points and added 15 boards in San Antonio's 117-115 double overtime win over the Suns in Game 1 of their first round playoff series. But Manu's driving bank shot with 1.8 seconds remaining sealed the deal in an instant classic game. Ginobili to the basket, puts it up, banks it in! Ginobili scored 24 points on an ugly 10 for 24 shooting night, but the game winner embodied Manu. Even if he struggles over the course of a contest, he has a tendency to shine when the stakes are highest. Manu made his first All Star appearance in 2005, presenting a dilemma for the Spurs. By the halfway point of the 2006 7 season, the staff agreed the Spurs were a better team with Manu coming off the bench, considering it was nearly impossible to spread touches between him, Duncan, and Parker. Coach Pop presented the idea to Manu in January 2007. I don't think I've ever admitted this, even to my staff, Coach Pop told ESPN. But if Manu decided he was not good with it, he was gonna start. Whatever he said, we would do it. He deserved that. Despite a burning desire to play with the starters, Manu chose the best interest of the team. His acceptance of a lesser role was significant in establishing San Antonio's winning culture. Manu was rewarded for his sacrifice in 2008. When the league honored him with the Sixth Man Award, Coach Pop joked about where Manu might keep it. He probably wants to take it and shove it up my ass, the coach joked. In 2009 Manu had a bizarre, yet iconic moment. It was Halloween, and with 45.2 seconds remaining in the first quarter of an eventual win over Sacramento, a Mexican free-tailed bat flew around the arena, sending players scurrying. As the bat swooped toward a cowering Kevin Martin, who had just attempted a three-pointer, Manu dipped low to his left, then rose quickly to swat the bat out of midair with his left hand. Oh, Manu knocked it out of midair! Nonchalantly, Ginobili picked up the bat, cupped it in his left hand, and walked over to an arena attendant as head trainer Will Sevening ran out to the court to squeeze hand sanitizer into the guard's mitts. As expected, Manu took a humorous approach in describing the episode. It's just a mouse with wings, he said at the time. When you can't dunk anymore, you have to find a way to make it into the news. So that's what I did. In Game 1 of the 2013 Western Conference semifinals versus the Warriors, sitting in the locker room, fighting through a stomach virus, Duncan watched San Antonio rally from 16 down over the final four minutes of regulation. He returned courtside in overtime to have a front row seat for Manu's magic with 1.2 seconds left in the second overtime. Here's Ginobili for three. <laughs> Golden State led 127-126 with 3.4 seconds remaining. Then, Manu knocked down a shot for a 129-127 win. An incredible comeback for the Spurs who take a 1-0 lead. Manu had missed his previous seven shots before nailing the winner. I was wide open, so I didn't have any other option, Manu told TNT's David Aldridge immediately after the game. If I could have thought about it and do something else, I could have. I, I, probably the second shot I made all day. Good timing, though. The basketball world wondered whether the 36-year-old Manu was washed up coming off an emotionally draining loss in the 2013 NBA Finals. But with 2.47 remaining in the second quarter of Game 5 of the 2014 Finals, Manu delivered one of his most triumphant postseason moments with a driving dunk on Chris Bosh in San Antonio's championship clinching win. Team doctors revealed a month later that Manu had been playing with a stress fracture in his leg. I went hard and once I was in the air, I felt like I had a shot, and tried, Ginobili said. I think it helped the team, too, to get pumped up. Manu followed up on the ensuing possession with a step-back three-pointer over LeBron James, capping a vintage first half for him. He produced 14 points on 5 of 7 shooting off the bench as San Antonio went on a 41-18 run over the final 17 minutes of the first half. Three years later in the 2017 playoffs against the Rockets, Manu had another iconic moment. Here's Harden, Ginobili's on him. He's got all shot, and what a play by Ginobili! Knocked it away! San Antonio wins in overtime! 
0.3 seconds left to play in overtime. Manu crept up from behind and swatted away James Harden's final attempt at tying Game 5 to preserve a Spurs victory. I know where his shot releases from, and he went by me, Manu said of the final play of the game. So I tried to bother him as much as I could, and I saw I found myself very close to the ball. So I went for it. It was a risky play, but it was also risky to let him shoot. So I took my chances. Manu hates revisiting this moment, describing it as super awkward because he felt he was being retired, even though he hadn't made such an announcement. But as the seconds ticked away in San Antonio's 129-115 elimination loss to the Warriors, the remaining fans at the Spurs arena stood, waved Spurs towels, and chanted for Manu as they walked off the court to a standing ovation with 2.25 remaining. You put him with Tony Parker and Tim Duncan, the winningest trio in NBA history. Just before the game, Coach Pop informed the Argentinian he would make his first postseason start since 2013. If it was going to be Manu's final game, Coach Pop wanted to make sure to honor him. Even after the lopsided loss, Spurs fans continued their Manu chants as Ginobili walked off the court and headed into the tunnel toward the locker room. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Manu moment? If you like this video, share, subscribe and hit the like button. For more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels. Vintage Dawkins and Squad Dawkins and follow us on social media.